The U.S. presidential election is less than two weeks away, and institutions are making bullish bets on Bitcoin in the aftermath of November 5th. Joining me to discuss is Keiko Research Analyst Adam Morgan McCarthy. Adam, great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. All right. So you've just released a report on how traders are positioning themselves in the crypto markets ahead of the U.S. election. And you discuss three key points there. The fact that this is crypto's first election, that crypto market trends amid the rise of prediction markets like poly market are coming about and the positioning in crypto derivatives ahead of the election. So let's start with that first point there. Crypto's first election. How is the 2024 election different from what we saw in 2020? Yeah, I think it's basically crypto's kind of reached a critical mass versus where it was in 2020 and 2016. The, but looking at focusing on 2020 in that comparison, volumes are much higher, trade counts much higher. Um, it's kind of become a, st a stable talking point on Wall Street. People like Larry Fink from BlackRock, you know, talking about Bitcoin on TV, talking about Bitcoin at conferences. It's it's in the it's in the conversation now. There's more trading volumes. Um, it's about 50, 55 grand more expensive than it was um, four years ago. I think it was trading about, you know, 40, it had trade about 10 to 14K or so back then in 2020. So it's just a completely different market with a lot of different players, more traditional players involved. And um, because of that, I think you can kind of take what's happening in crypto and in Bitcoin, let's say, with more uh, kind of put more weight on it because it's got that kind of more liquidity, more volumes, more activity and more kind of investable products. I see you have a chart on the difference in trading volumes uh, or the trading volume in the run up of the 2020 election. What do you see in terms of the difference from 2020 to 2024? Yeah, I think we've kind of had a run up into this election. Back in 2020, prices were quite flat until kind of sort of December 2020. And then they started picking up early 2021. And this time it's been a bit different, you know, as we saw, we had a September that was Bitcoin price rose, which is pretty rare. Usually it doesn't go up, but it usually goes down in September. So we've kind of, I don't want to say like, um, uh, kind of front run it, but like we've, we've seen the price inc uh, increase leading up to the election, which is a lot different to last time. Um, you know, we, you might have expected markets to be in a bit more of a kind of wait and see mode and see, but I think it's kind of a, symptomatic of what's happening in broader markets as well, where things are just kind of, there's an animal spirits out there and things are kind of rallying. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we're seeing the rise of poly market as a way to predict election uh, outcomes and Trump is winning that race, but how reliable are these prediction markets? Yeah, I mean, I think that people are getting quite caught up with poly market this year and it's 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 been a kind of great crypto use case. It's gotten a lot of people to, uh, it's kind of, Kind of made its way into the ether into the conversation and it's interesting i mean um but at the end of the day i don't know like if we can really rely on its predictive capabilities just yet it's his first election um open interest on there isn't that high i think it hasn't really gotten over 250 million across the whole platform um and that election contract only has about two billion trade volume so liquidity is low and it doesn't take a lot of traders to move it but we're certainly seeing that there's a kind of tilt uh towards donald trump and that kind of gap has opened up but um, there's what a lot kind of, of liquidity would we or what kind of open interest would we need to see to to be more comfortable with the liquidity? I think you'd need to get closer to the billions um, to like really rely on it because, um, you know, there it, at the moment, it's just it, it is too low. It can be moved. But that that's not sort of necessarily a bad thing. I think that the problem is maybe that people are. Some of the conversation out there is all oh, poly market is tilted right or it's this it's that the thing is the incentives are different to polls so you know polls are, are going to say it's closer because a pollster's incentive is to kind of get that right within a margin of error whereas if you're betting on poly market you're you've got a binary outcome you want to get it right so you like you know you don't care once they win they can win but one vote they can win by 100 votes it's just about calling us whereas polls are you know scrutinized a bit more especially over the last eight years with elections kind of over here in the UK or over in um, the US, there's been like some kind of polling miscalculations that have drawn a lot of scrutiny. So I think it's unfair to kind of compare the two in that sense. Um, so yeah, that's what I would I'd say. You mentioned that 
there are a lot of non, well, there are exclusively non-U.S. bettors on uh, on these prediction markets who are betting on U.S. election outcomes. So how do you think that figures in the uh, results and, and the fact that these are mostly pro-crypto natives and Trump is the more outspoken pro-crypto candidate out there? Yeah, I think you have to factor that in as well. Um, it certainly probably plays a part, or plays a role. Um, in you know getting towards that 60 40 whatever the gap is now i think it might even be 62 38 um in favor of trump um but i would say that's probably kind of harmony even if these aren't um us natives i mean it doesn't look to be us natives broad but there's probably a harmony between um the us the like non-us users on polymarket and us crypto users they probably are leaning similarly in that they would prefer Trump on his uh, policy as he's been a little bit clearer on that. And as we saw, he spoke at Bitcoin conference in August. Um, but I think, you know, does it does it cause a disparity between reality? Not probably not too much. If it was allowed, if you allowed US voters, uh, users on there, it would probably be pretty similar, I think, personally. Mm -hmm. So you say that the crypto derivatives market is a better gauge of how traders are positioning ahead of the election. So what data points stick out there yeah i think i like i like to look at derivatives they've been around a little bit longer derivative derivatives got a lot of volume a lot of liquidity it's been around i think since 2016 so you know it's kind of tried and tested what we're seeing is a lot of volume on those near kind of near uh, front month contracts i mean there's a few extra expiries now for the end of october beginning of november and then the special election contract that derivative launched for november 8th um so we're seeing like a lot of bullish kind of volume on that. So strike prices above the current market price around 75 to 80K, I think. Um, and it's not just in the underlying, it's not just kind of on derivative in general, it's also block trades, which are probably negotiated institutional trades usually. And we're seeing like some heavy buying from institutions there around strike, strike price around 75K as well this week. So I think mean, it's tilting bullish. There's a lot of activity around the kind of next three weeks. Um, but then further out, December 27, we're also seeing some some volume on there. I think over a billion dollars in 100K strike price recently in volume. So they, 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 they regardless of who wins the race. So, yeah, yeah. There's so it's of, pretty yeah. it's a pretty. So are you saying that institutional traders are basically betting a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin by the end of the year, who, no matter who wins? I it, it's, it certainly looks like that from some of the data we're seeing that there's people piling into these bets and then, um, you know, that's uh, that's a good two months after the election, or good, you know, nearly two months after the election because the election is the start of November. So I think that's fair to say it's regardless of who's going to win, there is a kind of bullish tilt there that the market will rally into the end of the year. Can you talk a bit about the institutional activity in terms of options volume, the contracts bought and sold? Yeah, so uh, we're seeing... Um, on the 75k there was 550 contracts bought i think on that so it's like pretty big amount just for one block trade that's one trader and there's been a bit more then on the november 8th um on the 80k strike and the 72k strike so that would kind of tell us that you know we could be seeing like markets are positioning potentially for kind of fresh all-time highs around the election but then also further out into december there's still that kind of animal spirits that they you know think mm -hmm. they see the bitcoin price rally into the into christmas i saw that one popular option strategy on this uh, november 8th expiry is a long strangle you call it so institutional traders are betting on high volatility yeah so basically it involves buying a put on a call um so we kind of we've got an example in our report of it so the stra strategy would capture large price moves either side of the current strike price so it's works best when there's a when there is kind of heightened volatility and i think that's what institutions are um, positioning for ahead of this election because you know it won't just be uh with the vote in the week there's the fed meeting as well on the friday um i think it is or the 7th of, of november so there's going to be kind of several volatility drivers there and um that'll be interesting to watch okay so based on this uh data it seems that traders think the crypto prices will go through the moon no matter who wins uh, after the U.S. elections. But does it say anything about who derivatives traders think will win the election? 
Yeah, I think, I mean, they're certainly positioning for higher prices after. I don't know about the moon just yet, but um, I, not in the derivatives market can we see as much of that um, on the who part. So we kind of looked at traditional financial markets for a little bit more insight on that in the report. Um, and I think if you look at the um, 10 year uh, yield on US treasuries, that's ticked up a lot since the end of September, which we're kind of equating with more interest in more uh, kind of certainty on Donald, Donald Trump victory, because obviously he's been very vocal about kind of bringing back more tariffs. He wants to make tariffs a nice word. He thinks it's a beautiful word. Um, but this, this would uh, this would increase um, inflation. This is inflationary, so that's uh, reflected in the kind of higher yields on the ten-year um, T bills. So that's what we're seeing in kind of more traditional markets, um, and that's uh, kind of our our take there. You can see that too in the DJT price, the Trump Media stock. It's kind of going up. It's pretty illiquid and trades um, quite wildly. I think Trump's probably the largest holder of assets there, but. Um, it's it's also tilting higher since the end of September, which is kind of in line with the other metrics we're using as well. Interesting. So yeah, you're looking on the stock for some insights. Uh, that's an interesting one on the ten year U.S. Treasury yields uh, rising because of uh, linking that with Trump. Um, do you think a rise in yields is good or bad for crypto? Because I've heard narratives either way. Yeah, um, I think it's kind of all a bit funny at the moment because the dollar is having its best month since April 2022, but Bitcoin's doing pretty well. It's up seven, six or seven percent. Um, typically, you'd expect risk assets to kind of perf not perform as well, and when the dollar's doing better, Bitcoin wouldn't do as well. But that is sort of kind of a, that idea is being flipped in its head a bit this month. Um, so. I guess we'll have to see how that plays out in the long term. I don't know. I don't know if that'll last that uh, kind of correlation, but we'll see. Yeah, I guess it depends on whether you see Bitcoin as a high growth uh, risk asset or a safe haven, which yeah. you know could go either way. Adam, uh, you also so this is part of a two part series. Can you give us a preview of what we might see uh, the following week? Yeah, so we've got another report coming out next week where we're going to get a little bit more granular into things that you can track the week of the election. So we have uh, really, really valuable tick trade data, which gives you great insights. So you get a, like, that's something we're going to write a little bit more about and how you can watch that or how traders might be able to use that to kind of turn the election to see what the market is moving. We're going to talk a little bit more about implied volatility, term structures, and, um, you know, what part people are pricing on a kind of longer term IV towards the end of the year as well. Uh, as a few other indicators on per perpetual futures and funding rates. So that's more to come. Great. Adam, thanks so much. No worries. Thank you. Right. That was Keiko Research Analyst Adam Morgan McCarthy.